Hello and welcome to the section of the MATLAB Tutor. Here we're going to learn how to clean up our plots just a little bit. Just do a little bit of basic customization. When you have more than one plot on the same graph, sometimes it's nice to be able to differentiate one from the other and just change a few elements of it. So just to recall from the last section, we defined uh, X to be from 0 to 10 in increments of 0 0.1. So that produced a very long list of data here. And then we declared the Y vector to be sine of x and then we declared the g vector to be cosine of x so it's all the same data that we were uh, looking at from the last section so if we plot x comma y comma x comma g plotting the two functions at the same time then what we're going to get is the following graph which we've already looked at before now again it's functional it works um, it's just a little hard sometimes to tell between the two the two different graphs here so let me show you something we can replot that re retrieve the last command and let me just sort of take this off so you plot x comma y and for a third argument if you put a single quote and then put a dash like this and then do x comma g and then do another argument double dash something like this then basically what you're telling MATLAB is plot the first set of data using you know a line and plot the second set of data using sort of like a dash line so let's go ahead and hit enter and see what something like that looks like we'll go to the figure and you can see things have changed the first set of data which is the sine of x the blue, the blue line is basically still a line that's what the single dash basically does is treat it as a line and then a double dash basically treats it as what you see here a dashed line so that's quite useful uh, you can do variations of this as well. If you don't want this to be a line, you can also use a period. So the first set of data will be, will be plotted as uh, dots, and the second set of data will be plotted as this dashed line. So we can go ahead and hit enter and see what something like that might look like. So the sine graph is uh, now a, do a dotted line, and the cosine graph is now a dashed line. And, you know, I don't know about you, it might make you a little dizzy, but I actually like the way this looks. It, it quickly and easily lets me uh, differentiate between the two graphs other than just the color, so that's really nice. Now let me show you a couple of other things that you can do, just quick and dirty things. I mean, this is not an extensive list of things that you can do to alter your plots, but it is nice. Um, you can turn a grid on. Literally all you have to do is type grid space on and it'll apply to the active plot window, go back to it, and now we have a grid. Um, you know, it sometimes makes the graph not as readable, but sometimes if you're trying to reference a graph and you're trying to constantly read off of a chart, it's nice to have a grid there. If you get tired of looking at it, you can just go back in here and type grid off and go back to your plot window and then you'll see that it's gone. All right, now the other thing is, um, if we go over here, we can insert a title, which we've learned how to do before, um, sine and cosine graphs, or something like this, you know, and we can do this obviously on the graph menu, or we can go and, and do it with the command line arguments like we've done before. We'll just go ahead and do an X label, we'll do X axis like this, and then we'll go here, Y label, we'll do Y axis. For our two functions there so now we have x and y and we have a title and all that now we can also go insert and you see down here where it says legend we can insert a legend so it puts a legend here in the screen data one is uh, with a period with a blue period and data two is with a dashed line so basically when you assign the, the the stroke of the graph so to speak then when you put the legend in there it's all connected and it knows what the data the data uh, uh, points look like for the different data sets. Now it's a little bit boring to say data 1 and data 2. I mean you don't really want to say that. You might want it to say cosine and sine, right? So let's go ahead and take that off. You can obviously add a legend quickly with the drop down menu, but let's take it off for now and let's go back to the command window and let me show you how to add the legend in the command line. So you can do legend and again it's going to apply to the active plot window. You open it up and notice it's telling you in the help string 1 and string 2. So for data set one, that was sine of x. So we can put sine of x, close the quote. For data set two, we can put cosine of x. So basically all you do is you uh, put a text string for every set of data you have, for every plot you have. And it's going to assign the first one with plot, the first plot you list up here, and the second with the second plot that you list up here. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Let's go back to our plot window. And then we will see that the blue dot is associated with sine of x and 
the green dashes are assigned with cosine of x, right? So, and you can go and you use your uh, data trace. You can click on the blue dots and you can trace along that graph. And then you can go over here to the green and click on that and trace in that graph. So if you're trying to find an intersection point or something pretty darn close to start hunting around for a solution, you can look down there. If you'd like to zoom in, you can go in here and box that in and see exactly where that is. Now notice that when we, let me go ahead and pull it right back up here. Notice that when we, um, when we trace here, the, um, it's not exactly going to intersect at the exact crossing because we're, you know, we defined our x values to be spaced apart by 0 0.1. So because it's not super close tight spacing, it's kind of hard to get an exact number. But you can see the intersection point is pretty close to x is equal to 3.9. And if we really wanted to go tighten that up, we could go solve this system of equations for these two graphs and find the exact value. Or we could go replot the values with a much tighter spacing in our x. And that will get a lot more points on the screen here and would be able to trace through with a lot more granularity. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom out here. So that is basically how you do basic plots and, and changing the basic characteristic of plots in MATLAB. There's a lot more that you can do that are kind of beyond the scope of this, um, this essential skills of MATLAB course that we've been doing here. But I hope you've enjoyed what we've accomplished. And we've accomplished a lot. We've taken you from absolutely zero knowledge of MATLAB through the user interface, how you input calculations, how you deal with variables, how you deal with matrices, how you deal with solving systems of algebraic equations, how do you deal with calculus, how do you deal with um, you know, all of the little syntax along the way, and also how you do uh, basic plotting as well. So there's a whole universe out there of additional things MATLAB can do that we'll cover in subsequent and future courses and future sections. But for now, pat yourself on the back. You understand the basic concepts of MATLAB. You understand how to get around in MATLAB. And you understand, most importantly, how to learn more. Once you understand the basic framework of how this program works, then it just opens the door for you to understand and learn more and learn it faster. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you've enjoyed this. Go back and practice the skills that we've learned here. And then go and, and, and kind of crack your knuckles and get in there and solve some real problems for yourself. And I, I know that you'll understand how important and how versatile MATLAB is. So go learn it and go have fun with it most of all.